Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a technique called Pulse Field Gel Electrophoresis which is used to separate really large DNA molecules. It can separate chromosome sized DNA fragments which are not usually feasible with traditional agarose based gel electrophoresis. So let's see what this technique is all about. So the idea behind pulse field gel electrophoresis was first put forward in the year 1984 in the paper by Schwartz and Cantor and there was initially a big you know there is a backstory about how David Schwartz tried to convince his advisors about this technique to separate really large DNA fragments but he got you know very cold responses uh, and eventually you know he convinced his advisor to put some money into developing this apparatus and he could isolate and separate yeast chromosomes by using this gel electrophoresis technique. The idea behind pulse field gradient gel electrophoresis or pulse field gel electrophoresis is pretty simple. In the traditional gel electrophoresis, we have a negative electrode and a positive electrode and we have the wells. These are small grooves where we load our DNA sample and when we apply electric field the DNA samples move from negative electrode to positive electrode. DNA is usually negatively charged because of sugar phosphate backbone and depending upon their size their mobility is different. So heavier molecules are towards the top and light fragments are towards the bottom okay, or smaller DNA fragments. This is the traditional mechanism of agarose based gel electrophoresis. Now this method is okay for small as well as large DNA molecules but it starts to reach its resolution limit at 50 kilo base pairs of DNA. After that there is almost no resolution. So if there is the DNA molecule of 50 kb, 60 kb, 70 kb there will be no difference in their mobility. So pulse field gel electrophoresis uses a kind of a different setup. They uses pulses of alternating fields and that's why it's called pulses, pulse field gel electrophoresis. So they are situated at different angles. So not in a straight line, but at different alternate angles, which apply pulses of electric field to the separating DNA so that the direction of the electric field changes after a few seconds or minutes depending upon the time bar which is set up and that basically moves the chromosome or the large DNA fragment to a different direction every time and that allows better separation of these large DNA fragments. So Schwartz and Cantor technique was okay but it did not give very good results and it was very hard to compare gel to gel. So it really depended uh, upon where you load the DNA in the sample. So in the original Schwartz and Cantor technique, of course we have DNA fragments and we have the alternating fields, but the migration really depended on whether you load it in the first well or the second well. So there was improvement of these techniques by Gilbert Chu in 1986 where he developed contour clamped homogeneous electric field electrophoresis. This is called the CHEF electrophoresis or CHEF electrophoresis. Now in this technique we have hexagonal arrays. So there are three different electric fields. So here is one negative electric field and positive. So this will allow it to migrate in this way. Here we have negative and positive. This is this way and finally this way. And the timer basically switches and alternates between these electric fields. This is the conventional agarose gel electrophoresis where it goes like this. The direction is in just straight. Okay. And here because of changing pulses, there is change of movement of DNA and that allows the resolution of larger DNA fragments. Here you can see a very nice 
a picture of the original design so here we have 90 degree separation so this is called the rectangular array and here we have the hexagonal array and it was found that the hexagonal array gave much better resolution as compared to the rectangular array so 120 degree angle was better as compared to a 90 degree angle as we see in a rectangular array here you can see a nice animation of how the alternating electric fields are changing in pulse field gel electrophoresis so here you have dna fragments which are migrating and they are basically shifting their migration based on the alternating electric fields the electric fields are shown in these red lines and after the gel is run then you can stain it with ethidium bromide and you can observe it on the gel okay so here you can see the animation again so here you can see the migration changing of electric fields every few seconds or moments and after the gel is all done then you can see the stain okay then you can stain them up and see the bands here is a band or here is an original gel for pulse field gel electrophoresis where they are looking at drug resistant staph aureus so genomic DNA of staph aureus has been cut by very rare cutting restriction enzymes so that it produces only 10 to 12 different fragments here you can see that they are very large so 388 kb all the way to 48.5 kb right? so here we have the lambda DNA okay and you can see the different isolates from 1 to 25 they have different digestion patterns sometimes different bands okay that gives us an idea about origins and the heterogeneity between different food borne pathogens or in this case drug resistant staph aureus here you can see the comparison between the other technique we have another technique which we will not discuss this is called orthogonal field alternating gel electrophoresis this was also tried but it didn't give very good resolution as you can see here these are yeast chromosomes being resolved so you can see the resolution is not so great this is from the original Gilbert Chu's paper here you can see the uh, chef electrophoresis contour clamped homogeneous electric field electrophoresis you can see very nice resolution of different yeast chromosomes so this is the most superior technique and here you can see another technique where the chef is applied but this is in the rectangular array so it is also giving poorer resolution as compared to the chef here which is the hexagonal array so hexagonal array chef is routinely used and it is the standard nowadays here you can see the genotyping of different isolates so what is normally done the protocol in brief is that we have agarose plugs in which we have the bacterial isolates and these plugs are directly loaded into the well and what we do is we lyse the bacteria as well as carry out in gel restriction digestion so the, the DNA is isolated inside that agarose plug as well as uh, it is a restriction digested with that rare restriction enzyme it produces about 10 to 12 fragments these are really heavy fragments and then these are resolved and this can be very useful if you want to track how the pathogen a foodborne pathogen for example E. coli 0157H7 is tracking in different areas where it is being carried over from one area to the other because these will have similar patterns so it is very useful for genotyping of different microbial isolates especially for foodborne pathogens so this was my discussion of pulse field gel electrophoresis let me know if you have comments or questions about it i hope you like this discussion please give the video a thumbs up if you like the video and do subscribe to my channel for more educational videos like this thank you for watching and i will see you next time